Hello everyone, Max here from Evidence-Based Football Manager. This is part two of my match day mechanics video series for FM24. Today we're going to talk about overall physical condition. Overall physical condition is what people usually refer to as fitness, but actually the proper term for it is overall physical condition. So that's how I'm going to call it in this video. Overall physical condition or OPC for short, uh, it's uh, represented in the game with uh, these heart shaped icons. I'm going to divide this video into three parts. First, I'll do a quick overview on how OPC works in general in FM24. Secondly, I will show you the various factors in the game that affects how much a player uses his OPC during a match. And lastly, I will show you the various factors in the game that affect how fast OPC recovers on non-match days. So let's start by going through some general facts about OPC. OPC is a parameter that ranges between 1 to 10,000. When you use the in-game editor, it says here that the minimum possible OPC is 5,000, uh, which is not entirely accurate. It is possible for OPC to drop below 5,000 if you, if you check your players immediately after a match, um, as you can see from this screen right here. Now, it is usually not possible to view the exact numerical value of OPC in the game, but uh, there are some custom skins out there that you can download that uh, that will display the exact OPC of players in a, in a percentage format. I've downloaded the SAS24 custom skin from the uh, FM Scout website, uh, which does allow me to view the exact OPC of players in a percentage format. I have made a table here that converts the different colored heart shaped icons into their uh, corresponding OPC values. And so you can see that uh, as the level of OPC decreases, uh, these heart shaped icons become less and less full and its color also changes gradually uh, from green to yellow to orange to red. So these icons uh, kind of give you a rough estimation of the level of OPC. During a match in FM24, players will typically spend between 15 to 20% of their OPC per half. For example, if a player started a match with 100% OPC, it might go down to around 85 to 80% by the, uh, by the end of the first half. Now, as soon as the whistle goes at the end of the first half and also um, at the end of the second half, there is always a little bit of rebound. Let's say a player started a match with 100% OPC and uh, it went down to 80% by the end of the first half. Uh, then it will instantly rebound back up to between 83 to 85%. Of course, the exact amount of OPC uh, spent by the player during a match will depend on various factors, uh, which we will be looking at pretty soon. Okay, moving on to the second part of this video. I've conducted some simulations using my test cup save file to investigate the various factors in the game that affect the amount of OPC used by players during a match. The Test Cup is a custom competition that I've created myself using the pre-game editor and I've been using this Test Cup save file to run my FM24 experiments. I'll write the details of the Test Cup save file on the screen right now so uh, feel free to pause the video uh, if you wanted to uh, read the details. I will be uploading this Test Cup save file on my Dropbox folder so feel free to download the save file yourself and um, take a look at it if you, if you wanted to do so. I first established a control by running 100 trials using the default test cup settings. So that's when all the players are at 100% OPC at the start of the match. Uh, all the players are 10 out of 20 in all the attributes and no tactical instructions have been used. At the end of every match, I exported the various statistics of uh, Team A players into an Excel table and um, I calculated the average values from the 100 trials. I also recorded the number of players who were injured during the match and uh, had to be substituted off the match. After establishing the control, I tried changing the various parameters in the game, uh, including the starting OPC levels of Team A players, the stamina attribute of uh, Team A players, the work rate attribute of Team A players, the mentality uh, used by the Team A tactics, the level of tempo uh, used by Team A, and lastly, uh, the level of trigger pressed used by the Team A tactics. So every time I changed one of these parameters, I conducted 100 trials uh, so that I could calculate the average values from those 100 trials. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the results together. Um, I have a fairly scary looking table here, which shows you the various statistics of Team A players. I am not going to go through every single one of these stats uh, in this video because uh, one, it will bore everyone to death, and two, most of them are not relevant for uh, today's discussion. Today we're just going to focus on four types of statistics. One, the post-match uh, OPC levels, so that's the, uh, the level of OPC of players at the end of the Test Cup match. Two, the amount of distance covered by players during the Test Cup match. Three, the match ratings of uh, Team A players. And four, the number of injuries during the Test Cup match that required substitutions. So I'll only be talking about uh, these four types of st uh, statistics today, but I will be uploading this full table on my um, Dropbox folder. So if you guys wanted to take a closer look at uh, all these statistics, you can uh, feel free to do so by visiting my Dropbox folder. I have prepared some bar graphs here, which makes it easier to visualize the four types of statistics that we will that we'll be discussing. So let's start by looking at this first graph here, uh, which shows you how the final amount of OPC at the end of the match changed depending on uh, all these different factors. So when players, when Team A players started the Test Cup match with 100% OPC, those players finished the match with 76 OPC on average. When players started, when Team A players started the match with 80% uh, OPC, they finished the match with around 57% uh, uh, OPC on average. And uh, when players started the match with 60% OPC, uh, the final OPC was 39% on average. So this all makes sense. If you start the match with full OPC, you will finish the match relatively less tired. And if you start the match with low levels of OPC, you will finish the match absolutely exhausted. Now let's take a look at the second graph here. Yeah? Guys, I will be jumping between these four tables back and forth today because uh, that way it's just easier to put all this data into perspective. So this second table uh, shows you the amount of distance covered by players during the Test Cup match. And uh, you can see that when players started the match with higher levels of higher levels of OPC, they ended up covering more ground during the match. Whereas when players started with low levels of OPC, they ended up covering less amount of uh, distance during the match. So this also makes sense. When uh, when the players are fresh, when they have fresh legs, they are able to cover more distance during the match. Whereas uh, when the players are more tired they are not able to cover as much distance uh, as, as before. And let's take a look at this uh, third table here. So this table shows you the average match ratings of uh, Team A players from the Test Cup match, uh, which I guess is a quick snapshot of how well the players performed on the pitch. So when, players, when Team A players started the Test Cup match with full OPC, they received the highest match rating on average Whereas when players started the match with low OPC, they received the lowest match rating on average. I know the match rating doesn't tell you the whole story, but um, I think it does. I think uh, what you're seeing here, uh, uh, it does serve as a quick proof that high levels of OPC does generally lead to superior performance on the pitch, whereas low levels of OPC generally lead to worse performance on the pitch. And lastly, let's take a look at this last graph here. So this graph shows you the number of injuries that occurred during the Test Cup match that requires substitutions. You can tell straight away here that uh, when players started the Test Cup match with low levels of OPC, the number of injuries skyrocketed compared to all these other scenarios when the players started the match with higher levels of OPC. So this serves as a quick proof that low levels of OPC are strongly correlated with high rates of injuries. So the data that we saw just now from these tables answers a question that I've had for a long time. If your starting players are getting tired near the end of a match, should you substitute them with your bench players? Or is it better to just keep your best players on the pitch if you think that your bench players just aren't good enough? To me, the answer is yes, you should definitely make those substitutions for two big reasons. One, even a good player will start performing worse and worse as his level of OPC drops more and more towards the end of a match. Two, 
the risk of injury skyrockets as the level of OPC falls more and more. So keeping your best players on the pitch when they are getting exhausted near the end of a match simply isn't worth it. So you should listen to your assistant manager, make those substitutions uh, in a timely manner, and your team will not only perform better, but uh, uh, they will be able to avoid injuries at the same time. Right, next, let's take a look at the role of the stamina attribute. So in this first graph here, you can see that when Team A players had 20 out of 20 stamina, they finished the Test Cup match with 79% OPC on average. When the players had 10 out of, 10 out of 20 stamina, uh, so this is the control data by the way, um, the final OPC of players was 76%. And when the players had 1 out of 20 stamina, their final OPC at the end of the match was 73%. This means that uh, the stamina attribute does influence the amount of OPC used by players during a match in Football Manager. Players with higher stamina will spend less OPC points during a match, whereas players with low stamina will spend more OPC during a match. The benefit of the high stamina attribute is highlighted even more when you take a look at the amount of distance covered by players during the Test Cup match. So if you take a look at this graph here, you can see that players with 20 out of 20 stamina covered more distance during the Test Cup match whereas players with 1 out of 20 stamina covered less amount of distance during the match. Let's try, com uh, let's try combining the findings from uh, the first and the second graph together. So, players with high stamina used up less OPC even when they were doing more amount of work on the pitch, whereas players with low stamina used up more OPC even when they were doing less work on the pitch. So guys, uh, the stamina attribute is pretty important if you want your players to do uh, if you want your players to do more work on the pitch while using up less OPC at the same time. All right, next let's take a look at the work rate attribute. If you take a look at this first first graph here, you can see that when uh, Team A players had 20 out of 20 work rate, they finish the Test Cup match with 74% OPC on average. When the players had 10 out of 20 work rate, the final OPC was 76%. And when the players had 1 out of 20 work rate, their final OPC was 80%. So the work rate attribute does have an impact on the amount of OPC used by players during a match. Players with higher work rate are more diligent, so they will naturally spend more OPC during a match. Whereas players with low work rate are they're lazy bastards, so they will naturally use up less OPC during a match. And if you take a look at this second graph, uh, you can see that players with high work rate covered more amount of uh, distance during the Test Cup match, whereas players with low work rate covered less ground uh, during the match. So this is another expected result. Players who are diligent will do more work on the pitch, while players who are lazy will do less work on the pitch. Do take note that uh, the work rate attribute uh, functions slightly different from the stamina attribute. Stamina uh, indicates how efficiently players spend their OPC points on the pitch. So a player with high stamina is able to do more work on the pitch uh, while spending less amount of OPC at the same time. On the other hand, the work rate attribute simply tells you how diligent or lazy the player is without necessarily indicating how efficient the player is in spending his uh, OPC points. So a player with higher work rate will do more work during the match, but that will come at the cost of using up more OPC points at the same time. It doesn't mean that uh, one attribute is better than the other. They uh, Stamina and work rate, you know, they're just two attributes that uh, simply give you two different pieces of information about the player. Okay, this time let's take a look at some tactical instructions. I try changing the tactical instructions of Team A during the Test Cup match, including team mentality, uh, level of tempo, and the level of trigger press. So let's see what kind of impact these tactical changes have had on the players of Team A. If you take a look at this first graph here, um, so I changed the mentality of Team A from very attacking to very defending, and you can see that the final OPC of Team A players at the end of the, uh, the Test Cup match changed by around 2%, which frankly is not as great a difference as I anticipated. 
Also, if you take a look at the level of tempo and the level of trigger press, there's really negligible impact uh, on the amount of OPC used by players uh, during the Test Cup match. So these findings are a little bit odd because um, I do remember a few years ago, I think it was when um, when they released uh, FM21, uh, the, the developers did make an announcement saying that uh, attacking mentalities and high levels of trigger press will result in players becoming uh, quite tired. The developers supposedly made the tweak to the game engine because they didn't want everyone just cranking up their team mentality and the level of pressing to like maximum levels all the time. So I was expecting to see uh, the level of post-match OPC go down by a lot uh, when I raised the mentality, tempo and the level of press to maximum levels in, the, in these tests. Uh, but, but I have to say I am not seeing any obvious differences as I change these tactical instructions. I don't know, maybe the developers made an adjustment to the tactical instructions back in FM21, but maybe they just forgot to port it over to FM24. Or maybe it was an adjustment that they made um, only for that uh, one installment uh, in uh, FM21. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, at least in FM24, I can say with confidence that uh, uh, the mentalities and the levels of pressing have no impact on the OPC of your players. Let's take a look at this second graph here. So here you can see that when I change the mentality of Team A from very attacking to very defending, the players covered significantly less amount of distance during the Test Cup match. It is interesting that with the very defensive mentality, players ran around a lot less during the match, but that didn't translate into those players saving up a lot of OPC during the match. It could be that when the team is on very defensive mentality, the players are running around less because everyone's just staying in their own half, but that means the team is being attacked by all the time by the opposition team. So, uh, so the players will still engage in activities that are physically draining, such as tackling, interceptions, applying pressures, and so on. So, as you can see from this, uh, these two table, uh, these two graphs, uh, just because players are covering less ground during a match uh, due to the very defensive mentality. It doesn't mean that uh, those players become less tired by the end of the match. And let's take a look at this uh, last table one more time. Remember, this table shows you the number of injuries caused during the Test Cup match that required substitutions. I've already told you that the amount of injury skyrockets when players start a match with low levels of OPC. And other than that, uh, there was no other test scenario that resulted in a significantly higher injury risk. The number of injuries did go up a little bit uh, when, when team mentality was set as very attacking and also uh, when tempo was set as either higher or lower. But the increase in the number of injuries from, the, uh, from these scenarios was nothing compared to this scenario here when players started the match with low levels of OPC. So again guys, always make sure that your players start every match with, with a fresh pair of legs and uh, make full use of uh, your substitutions uh, before, in a timely manner before your players get too tired. Okay, let's move on to the third part of this video and talk about recovery. In order to study how OPC recovers, uh, we'll be using this save file that, I'm, uh, that I've got on the screen right now. Uh, so this is a save file that's made immediately after the Test Cup match. You can see here that uh, the time now is 16.45 on Saturday, which is just after uh, the Test Cup match. And if you take a look at all these players from Team A, you can see that um, I've, I've equalized their OPC to 60%, so obviously everyone's uh, very tired. The first thing I want you to know about recovery is that uh, the recovery of OPC takes place at midnight every day. Uh, for example, um, let me try progressing the game for uh, one day. So um, now it's the midnight. Uh, so it says midnight Sunday here, but it's actually the night between Saturday and Sunday. Um, so if I if I check the squad view page, you can see that uh, a little bit of recovery has taken place for all these players from uh, Team A. And another thing I want you to note is that the recovery of OPC is not affected by the playing positions of uh, uh, all these players, including the goalkeeper. Um, as you can see, the amount of OPC recovery is the same for, uh, for all these players, regardless of their playing positions. 
The amount of recovery of OPC is influenced by the level of OPC before the recovery. Generally speaking, lower levels of OPC will recover by a larger amount per day, whereas higher levels of OPC will recover by smaller amounts per day. For example, here you can see that, um, so this time I have varied the level of OPC for all these players, uh, all the way from 50% to 100%. Now let me try progressing the game to midnight. And uh, so now you can see that a, a round of recovery has taken place for all these players. But if you compare the level of OPC before and after the recovery, you will notice that players who started with lower levels of OPC recovered by greater amounts, whereas players who started with higher levels of OPC recovered by relatively smaller amounts. In fact, uh, I, ha I have made a line graph here that shows you uh, the amount of OPC recovery per day, depending on the level of OPC before the recovery. So on the graph, you can see that uh, when the starting OPC is in, in the 50s, uh, OPC recovered by more than 10% per day. But uh, when the level of OPC before the recovery is uh, more than 90%, uh, those players will only recover by around between 2-3% to per day. Let's continue investigating other factors that can affect recovery in the game. So this time I have equalized the OPC of all these players to 60%. The three players at the top will act as the control, so uh, these three guys are just using the default settings. With the next three players, I lowered their match sharpness to 50%. Um, so 50% is the lowest match sharpness that you can get in the game. And with these three players, I maximized their fatigue to 1000 out of 1000. Uh, so you can see here that uh, for these three players, um, uh, it says here that they're all exhausted and that's because I've maxed out their fatigue parameter. With these three players, I've changed their stamina attribute to 20 out of 20. Um, with these three guys, I've changed their stamina to 1 out of 20. With these three, I've changed their natural fitness uh, attribute to 20 out of 20. And lastly, with these three, I've changed their natural fitness to 1 out of 20. Now let me go ahead and progress the game uh, again to midnight. And uh, if I come back to the squad view page, um, so let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at how OPC recovered for all these players. So the three players at the top are recovered from 60% to 68%. Um, so this is a control, yeah. So using the default settings, the amount of recovery is 8% uh, per day. And if you take a look at uh, these three players, remember they are. Uh, their match sharpness was set as 50% and you can see that their OPC only recovered up to uh, 66%. So this proves that the level of match sharpness affects the amount of recovery in, uh, in Football Manager. Players who are lacking in match sharpness will recover uh, more slowly, while players with uh, high levels of match sharpness will recover a little bit faster. And it's a similar story with fatigue as well. Um, so if you take a look at these three players, um, their fatigue was maxed out and uh, you can see that their OPC has only recovered up to 62%. So this proves that uh, high levels of fatigue can slow down the recovery of your players. So guys, don't let fatigue build up for your, uh, for your players. And when your assistant manager suggests resting a player for a match or two, do make sure to listen to their advice. Next, let's take a look at these six players who had different levels of stamina. So their OPC all recovered up to 68%. So for these guys, the amount of recovery per day is the same as the control. And this proves that stamina has no impact on the amount of OPC recovery. Remember that stamina is an attribute that can affect uh, the rate of OPC usage during a match, uh, as I showed you earlier. But stamina does not affect the rate of recovery. And finally, let's take a look at these six players who had different levels of natural fitness. Uh, these three players with 20 out of 20 natural fitness recovered up to 74%. Uh, so for these guys, the amount of recovery per day is uh, a lot more than the control. Um, whereas for these three players with one out of 20 natural fitness, they only recovered up to 66%. So this proves that the natural fitness attribute has a big impact on the amount of recovery per day. Players with higher uh, natural fitness attribute will recover faster, 
whereas players with low natural fitness attribute will recover relatively slowly. Okay, time to make a summary of today's video. One, overall physical condition is a parameter that ranges between one to 10,000. It is usually not possible for OPC to dip below 5,000 unless the player is extremely tired uh, uh, immediately after a match. OPC is represented in the game uh, using heart-shaped icons. Refer to the table below to convert those heart-shaped icons into the actual numerical values. Two, during a match, a player will typically use between 15 to 20% OPC per half. There is always a little bit of rebound in OPC at the end of the first half and also at the end of the second half. Three, Players cover greater amount of distance during a match when they are at high OPC. Players cover less amount of distance uh, when they are at low OPC. Four, players show superior performance during a match when they are at high OPC. Players show worse performance on the pitch uh, when they are at low OPC. Five, the risk of injury during a match skyrockets when players are at low OPC during a match. 6. The stamina attribute indicates how efficiently a player spends his OPC during a match. A player with high stamina will use less OPC for the same amount of work on the pitch, whereas a player with low stamina will use more OPC for the same amount of work. 7. The work rate attribute indicates how diligent a player is during a match without saying anything about the efficiency of OPC usage. A player with high work rate will do more work on the pitch and consequently use up more OPC throughout the match. A player with low work rate will do less work on the pitch and consequently use up uh, less OPC during the match. 8. When your team is on very defensive mentality, your players will save up a little bit more OPC compared to uh, when you're on very attacking mentality. Whether you're on higher or lower tempo has negligible impact on the amount of OPC used by your players. And also whether you instruct your players to press much more often or much less often, uh, it also has negligible impact on the amount of OPC used by your players. Nine, recovery of OPC occurs at midnight every day. 10, the amount of OPC recovery is not affected by a player's playing position, including goalkeepers. 11. The amount of OPC recovery is inversely proportional to the level of pre-recovery OPC. When a player is at low OPC, the amount of recovery per day will be greater, whereas when a player is at high OPC, the amount of recovery per day will be smaller. Refer to the graph below for the amount of OPC recovery per day, depending on the level of pre-recovery OPC. 12. The level of match sharpness affects the amount of OPC recovered per day. When a player is at high match sharpness, the amount of recovery will be greater, whereas when a player is at low match sharpness, the amount of recovery will be smaller. 13. The level of fatigue affects the amount of OPC recovered per day. When a player is at high fatigue, the amount of recovery will be greater, whereas when a player is at low fatigue, the amount of recovery will be smaller. 14. The stamina attribute has no influence on the amount of OPC recovered per day. 15. The natural fitness attribute does affect the amount of OPC recovered per day. Players with high natural fitness will show faster OPC recovery, whereas players with low natural fitness will show slower OPC recovery. All these findings from today uh, reinforce the importance of having a sufficient squad depth when you play Football Manager. If your players are tired, it will lead to worse performance on the pitch, it will lead to a high injury risk, and also if you let the fatigue levels of your players build up, it will slow down the recovery of your players which can, lead, which can actually lead to a vicious cycle of uh, you know, all, the, all the players getting more and more fatigued over time and uh, getting injured more and more uh, over time. So guys, um, I guess the take home message from this video today is that um, squad depth is important, rotation is important, and uh, timely substitutions during a match is also uh, super important. All right guys, that's it for today. That was a long one. Uh, thank you all for watching. 
This match day mechanic series for FM24 will be continued. Alright everyone, take care. Bye.